Welcome back to Billy Mac Makes. If you want to see how I can take one of these inexpensive big box store kitchen cabinets and turn it into a beautiful wine rack, then stick around for the rest of this video. These upper kitchen cabinets are actually great if you want to put in some built-ins in uh, a living room beside a fireplace or something like that. So let's see how it goes together. First, I'm going to start with the template as I'm going to be making a number of the same pieces. It's great if you can sketch out a quick design, make it out of some quarter inch hardboard, and then you can simply use a flush trim router bit and you'll be able to batch out your pieces pretty quick. So here I am just cutting out um, the circle that is really going to accept the neck of the wine bottle. Now it's so much easier if you cut this out first and then cut it down to your one and three quarter inch size. And here you can see I'm just sort of bisecting these circles. And then this piece that I'm pushing through the table saw right now is perfect to accept the front of the wine bottle, the, the part sticking out of the wine rack. Now I can cut the other end of my hardboard here and this can become the template for the bottom of the wine bottle. So I'm just getting close to my pencil line but I don't want to touch it yet and then I will just use a spindle sander to bring it right down to that pencil line and you can see this is a much gentler curve and this is actually a smaller piece as of course the wine bottle gets quite a bit bigger um, towards the bottom so this is just going to support the bottom of the bottle. Now this is the piece of poplar a uh, nice paintable piece of hardwood and I'm just measuring it out for the layout and I want to do my best to avoid these knots so I'm just testing and it works out perfectly that I will be able to avoid them. Now this is my friend who's cutting this for me as this wine rack is going to be going into his house. He's putting a um, sort of a DIY uh, set of built-ins beside his fireplace and he wanted to get involved in this project. Uh, he just doesn't have all the same tools that I do so here I'm just showing him how to drill out the hole getting close to the line but you don't want to try and drill right on the line because we're going to be getting a much cleaner um, cleaner edge when we use the flush trim bit. So once he batched out all of those holes I brought the piece of hardwood over and just cut off that one and a quarter inch bottom piece that we're going to make the back holder for the wine bottles and then this is just cutting off the top of those um, circles and then the part that I'm pushing through on the table saw those are going to be the supports for the neck of the wine bottles. Here I am just preparing the template with some double-sided tape and secure that down pushing it over towards the left side there uh, these pieces are all still just a little bit long and I was going to trim them down to their final size later but you can see that the uh, flush trim bit makes quick work of this as long as you've gotten yourself pretty close to where your final uh, dimensions are going to be. And there is a chamfer bit. Uh, if you haven't watched Blacktail Studios channel he does a great segment at the end on his troll of the week and he had a really funny one last week about the proper pronunciation of chamfer bit. Anyhow you can see the beautiful profile that it puts on to a workpiece and here I use my stop block to just set it at exactly the ten and a half inches and I can just batch out all of the pieces and they will all be the exact same size. After a little bit of sanding just to make sure there are no rough edges these guys are ready for a quick coat of paint. The simplest, easiest way to, to do this is with uh, just some spray paint. This is a two-in-one, so primer, paint, all-in-one, semi-gloss. After the paint, they would be ready for installation inside the cabinet. This cabinet has a 32 mil spacing, but that wasn't going to give us equal spacing, so we wanted to 
use a spacer block to give us the spacing we needed. And so I measured out, it was five inches, great. We threw in some nails from the side, only then to discover that we couldn't get our spacers out because of the wine rack in the front. No, it's got to come out. You just hit it. My friend thought, oh, what if we just tap it with a hammer? But it doesn't want to rotate inside there because it becomes longer when you turn it sideways. Anyhow, we decided to risk it and I just reached inside <laughs> and I reefed it out and we learned our lesson. You can't use the single piece if you're going to be blocking the exit. So after measuring out the location of all the other shelves, marking a line so we knew where to throw in those little brads to hold it in place, we used two pieces. And so it just sits on that top one, gets the spacing, you can slide that bottom piece out and then it comes out, no problem. Now the nails just sort of temporarily held it in there, but since no one is going to see the sides of this cabinet, because it is going to be part of a larger built-in, we could throw in some screws. Here it is, enjoy. Thanks for watching, and I really hope you'll consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons. As I am truly trying to grow this channel, any support you can show me there will go a long way. And you're gonna wanna hit that notification bell so that you know when the video is released showing the full build of these built-ins. Take care.